What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna be learning about how to build a web scraper in Python. And web scraping is one of the most like valuable assets in terms of Python and, and tons of people use Python solely for this reason. And it's super useful, so we're gonna learn about that today. Web scraping is just a simple idea of going to a web page such as this one right here, and you could scrape useful information off of it, such as like my first and last name here, my username, you know, how many followers I have and, and stuff like that. But people have used it for other stuff such as like pulling stock prices and weather data and all kinds of stuff. So without further ado, let's just get right to coding. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new Python project here. We're gonna call it Web Scraper. So one thing to note before we start, we need to make sure that we have all the necessary things installed in our environment so that our program will actually work. Now, if you're using Repolit like me, you can just simply like type in an import statement for a class. Even if you don't have it installed, it will automatically install it when you click run. But if you're using a traditional Python environment, such as like, you know, Linux or Windows or whatever it is, uh, you can just go to the shell of whatever that system is, we're just gonna go ahead and install or make sure that we have installed these two different modules that we're using today. So the first module we're using is called uh, requests. So we're gonna say pip install requests and make sure that that installs properly. And then the other module that we're gonna be using today is called beautiful soup four. So we're gonna say pip install and then just BS four. So that should install that, make sure that that's all you know, situated. Okay, guys, we have both of our modules installed here, so we can go ahead and open up the console again. And yeah, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and import those right at the top. So we'll go ahead and import requests, and then go ahead and say from BS4 import beautiful soup. So you might be asking yourself, what the hell is beautiful soup? And I'm going to tell you. Beautiful Soup is a nice little module written by the Python community that um, you can just take, you know, HTML files or XML files and just easily parse them. So it's just a nice little handy tool that you can use to, you know, parse through all that data. So now that we have our things imported, we're going to go ahead and say that we're going to start building a query. And what I mean by this is we're going to pick a website that we want to scrape data from. So before we do that, let's go ahead and actually get to that website. And for today's example, we're going to be scraping weather data. So I wanna scrape some weather data. I'm just gonna go ahead and type in like, uh, I don't know, Los Angeles, for example. And we're just gonna go ahead and pull some simple data from here, like, you know, the temperature and, you know, if it's sunny or not. Uh, we could go as far as pulling the day and night temperature and uh, some of the time here, but we're gonna see how far we get. So the first thing that you wanna do is go ahead and copy this URL up here. And we're gonna go back here. We're going to say URL is equal to and quotes and then put that actual domain inside of there. And the next thing we're gonna do is build a request to that URL. So we're gonna say HTML page is equal to requests.get. So we're going to go ahead and get this URL and we can just punch that in here as that parameter. So that should return us with the entire like raw HTML data from that site. And then we can go ahead and parse it further. So in order to do that, we're just gonna say, you know, beautiful soup, we're gonna create an object is equal to, and then beautiful soup and instantiate it and then add some uh, good old parentheses here. And the thing that we're gonna pass in is the HTML page dot content. And then for the second parameter, we're going to tell it what kind of parser we wanna use. So we're gonna say HTML dot parser. All right guys, so what we're doing here is we're going to weather.com, getting all the raw data and then passing it into beautiful soup so that we could start parsing through it later. So now that that's out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and say that we're going to parse, oops, parse the results. So let's think about what kind of results we actually want here. If we go back to our weather page, uh, we want all the data up here. Now you'll notice there's plenty of other types of data. There's some ads and all kinds of crap, but um, an easy way to start cycling through all this is you can go ahead and if you're in Chrome or even in Edge or whatever browser, you can just right click, click inspect, and that'll bring up DevTools. And you can see all the raw HTML back here that makes up the web page. Now you'll notice when we clicked inspect, it actually jumped right to this temperature thing. And I think this would be a good starting point for us to collect all of our data from. Now, before we do that, we should ask ourselves, what is this actually part of? Like, yes, this is a particular data point, but this is part of this div, just part of this and this and this. We can keep going up and let's just kind of find like a unique ID that we could reference. And you'll notice right up here, we have div ID is WXU, all this stuff. And we can go ahead and copy that ID go back to our code here and then use that ID and just basically tell it like, hey, look for stuff inside of this div. So we're gonna say, you know, results is equal to, and we're gonna say beautiful soup dot find. And then we can pass in our parameters like, hey, go ahead and find us this ID inside of that stuff. And if we go ahead and just print out results to the console right after that, 
could say print results, click run. You'll notice that we have all this raw data and it looks super ugly, but this is all the data that we actually want. There is some stuff in here and you see like Los Angeles, California. I'm sure if I actually had the patience to sift up through all this, you could find, you know, like 80 degrees and, you know, 1039 AM is one of these, but we're going to basically parse through this chunk and get all the useful stuff out of it. All right, guys, now that we have our initial chunk of data that we uh, can sift through in this page, we want to, let's just pick something. So let's go ahead and try to actually grab this data point. So this 83 degrees is the current temperature in Los Angeles. The first thing you wanna do is click inspect again. It will jump right here. You'll notice in this inside of the span here is where it says 83. So this is the part of the data that we actually want to capture. Now, what kind of unique data points are in here? We got a class that could be shared among several things. And we got this data test ID. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick class because that seems like a, a better thing here to filter on. So we're gonna say, you know, class equals and then copy this inner value here. So go ahead and copy this. And then also note one more thing. This data is stored inside of a span. Now, the reason we need to note that is because there's spans, there's divs, you know, there's these main blocks here. Um, we need to remember that it's stored inside of a span. So now that we have those two data points in mind, we could say, you know, current temp is equal to results.find. And then this is where we need to say span. So we're gonna say double quotes, span, and then comma. And then we're going to say class underscore is equal to, and then the name of the class. This is why we need to remember, we're telling it, hey, I know you got to look through this giant chunk of data here, but just look for spans and spans that have this class in it, and then pull me that value. So now if we go ahead and say print current temp, that should give us the entire like raw HTML. And if we take it a step further and say current temp dot text, then we should be able to uh, actually see the 83 degree value um, in there. So let's go ahead and click run. So you'll notice, just as I said, the first line is printing out the entire span. And then the second line is the actual value inside of the span. So that's awesome. We have our first piece of actual data um, that we can use in our web scraper. So let's go ahead and try another example. Let's go back to this page here. Maybe we want to uh, grab this little descriptor. You know, it says it's sunny. It might, sometimes it might say, you know, it's cloudy out or, you know, there's wind or whatever. But let's go ahead and just grab this little chunk. Right underneath the temperature, you'll notice it says sunny. And that is a div with this uh, class that looks unique. Let's copy this value inside of the class here. And we're gonna do a very similar thing as before. We're gonna say like description is equal to results dot find. This is a div instead of a span. And then we're gonna say class underscore is equal to that. Okay, so now that we have that data point, let's take it another step further. Now, let's say we want um, not only the location, which is Los Angeles. I know we know this already, but you know, it's just nice to have it. Maybe whoever you're displaying this to doesn't actually know where this weather is coming from. So let's grab that data point, And then let's go ahead and grab the time of the day over there. Go ahead and click, right click on this, click inspect. They'll jump up to where it says Los Angeles, California. You'll notice this is stored inside of an H1, like a header. You gotta keep making sure that you remember to note that h1 and then class equals whatever so copy that class value once again now we're going to say location is equal to results dot find it's stored inside of an h1 then we have class underscore equals the class so that should get us the location and then taking it another step further we have this span class current conditions whatever and this will store the actual time value so let's go ahead and note that it's a span. And we also note that current conditions timestamp, whatever is the class that it's using. So let's go ahead and go back to our code. And we're going to say, you know, time of day is equal to results.find. This is stored inside of a span. And the class is underscore equal to that. All right, guys, we've selected four different data points. So let's go ahead and print out all the results to ourselves. So let's say print results to user. Now we're going to say print. And let's start out with the um, current temperature colon, and then go ahead and add a comma. And we're gonna say current temp dot text. So we go, went ahead and print out that data. So let's go ahead and copy this line. We have three other data points to print out. So let's print it three more times. We're gonna change this one here to say weather description. We're gonna change the third one here down and that's going to say location. And the fourth one is going to be time of day. Actually, you know what? Let's just say local time because it could differ from whatever time zone you're in. You're just saying local time. And obviously we need to switch all the variables as well. So we're gonna say time of day is this last one. 
location is this third one here. Description is the second one here. So now that we have all of that data, let's just go ahead and run it and see if it works. All right, guys, let's go ahead and click run. And it's doing some stuff in the background, but you notice it says 84 degrees, it's sunny. We are talking about Los Angeles, California, and it is 10.50 a.m. over there. So if we just go back to our screen, we notice that all that data seems to line up. It looks like I got to refresh the page because it got a little bit hotter during this video. So now it's 84, sunny, 10.50 a.m., Los Angeles. You'll notice 84, sunny, Los Angeles, 10.50 a.m. We have done the impossible. We've scraped a web page and got all useful data. Now you could take it a step further. You can, you know, split on some of these uh, spaces here and just grab just a timeout. Uh, but we're not going to do that in this video. Uh, but yeah, there's plenty of things you can do with web scraping. It is super useful and very fun to do. And yeah, I hope you guys learned something today. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and comment down below any thoughts or suggestions or, you know, general questions you have in the comments. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.